Hey friends, this is the Mrs. Volfi from our Half Acre Homestead, and uh, I'm going on another rant. Um, we do a lot of talking about uh, chemicals and GMOs and all that stuff, and it's been really uh, causing me to lose some sleep. So I have been thinking about it, and I and I I wrote a little paper on it, and I want to share it with you because, well, it's Friday for starters. And uh, I won't be doing any videos because I'm going away for part of the weekend to visit that little baby that I made that quilt for. I'm very excited. So what I want to share with you is just some thoughts that have been percolating in my brain. And I don't want this to be overwhelming, folks. This is Some of it is going to sound familiar because I've talked about it before. But some of it is formulating more into a place of... Um, awareness in my brain and in my and in my mind and my heart so here we go I, I've had to write it down because it's the only way I could clarify my thoughts so forgive me if I'm going to read this okay I want to talk to you about chemicals now at the risk of sounding paranoid I have been giving a lot of thought about chemicals if it really feels like we're fighting a losing battle now I'm not talking about natural chemicals I'm talking about man-made synthetic chemicals I worry. I, I worry about environmental, environmental, I can't even say it, environmental chemicals from fertilizers, pesticides, herbicides, and fungicides. Then there's the chemicals and toxins from emissions, like factories and cars and, and all kinds of stuff. Um, also, the chemicals that are disguised in our foods most of which we can't pronounce <laughs> and are what is considered generally recognized as safe mostly because they've been used for so long without without too much public outcry that they refuse to reevaluate anything that has been used since 1958 or earlier now remember hydrogen the hydrogenated process for fats um, started in the late 1800s so there's a big window where a lot of precedents could have been set um, with food and drugs that they just don't even bother checking into anymore because they're, they've are they been around that long and nobody has died. Well, died immediately. Well, maybe some people have. We just don't check the records. But anyway, then there are the pharmaceuticals, most of which are chemical-based and with a list of side effects that grows longer with each new drug introduced. Then there are street drugs. Ooh, and they're coming up with many new ways to use common everyday items to get high and fry our brains. Like bath salts and incense. So what does this do to us? Well, according to chemicalbodyburden.org, scientists estimate that everyone alive today carries within his or her body 700 contaminants, most of which not have been well studied. You want to hear my theory? Don't laugh. We're becoming a world of zombies. I'm, I'm not talking about Hollywood zombies that rise from the grave. I'm talking about the true walking undead. Now you think about this. In Miami, a man hopped up on bath salts eats the face off a homeless man. Another man decapitates a total stranger on a Greyhound bus with a knife and begins to eat him. And even if insanity is a factor, research indicates that psychosis can be chemically in induced. You think? Now, everything in our environment, our water, our soil, our plants, everything is becoming a factor with chemicals in it. There's nothing that is chemical, completely chemical free anymore. Now you think about this. We trust or are taught to trust doctors. Doctors are taught to trust the pharmaceutical companies that supply the medicines they prescribe. Because, of course, they must be regulated, right? These companies, supported mostly by corporate sponsors and approved by government-regulated reg boards who are populated by ex-corporate chemical company executives. Now, I'm not saying all the boards have, have chemical company ex-executives on them, but most of them do. 
They have some, anyway. In the United States, both food and drugs. Now, I, I don't understand this at all. Both food and drugs are regulated under the same board, the FDA. So who do we trust? Not me, not me, us, ourselves. Well, folks, I've said it before and I will say it again. The buck must stop with us. We must be our own regulation board. For, for too long, we have allowed ourselves to be led down the path of complacency for the sake of convenience. And I'll tell you, convenience is a disease, folks. You think about that. We have trusted those who have said fluoride in our water is good, that hydrogenated oils are better for you than simple animal fats and natural vegetable oils, that the benefit of most pill pills and medications today far outweigh the long list of potentially horrendous side effects, that the chemical additives in prepackaged foods must be safe or they wouldn't let us eat them, right? Right? We have trusted for so long. Most of society blindly accepts that the food we purchase in the stores are safe and healthy. To the point now that we're being fed genetically modified foods that can be hugely harmful because there are no real thorough studies that can show long-term consumption effects. Do you know how they make GMO plants? Okay, this was a big this was a big issue at one point. I, w I was told that I was an absolute freakazoid because GMO is apparently just hybrids. Sorry, folks. You know my topic on that. They make GMO plants by attaching a virus to genetic material from one source of plant or animal and infecting the genetics of the host plant and causing it to mutate in self-defense. What, what am I going to say? Self-defense. These plants, like GMO corn and GMO soya, which are, are, by the way, the two biggest components in food today, if you dig deep enough, are so messed up. These plants are so messed up, they reject herbicides that kill every other plant around it. But they grow happy and strong. And they are feeding this stuff to us. With little or no labeling. What is wrong with this picture, folks? So here it is in a nutshell, folks. We're a sick race. Mentally, emotionally, physically. And no one is going to save us but ourselves. What do we do? We wake up. We put one foot in front of the other and make one change in our daily lives. It does not have to be overwhelming. We can start by asking questions. Does this food contain GMO? Is this medicine safe? What are the side effects? Is this plastic BPA free? What are these chemicals on this food label? Then we demand answers. Because with knowledge comes power. And with power comes liberation. Once we have heard the truth, we cannot ignore it. Once we have seen a picture of a man's face that was eaten off by a chemically lobotomized zombie, we cannot unsee that image. Well, we can. We can take a little pill, go get some fast food, and pretend that this is not happening. Or we can choose freedom. One life changing choice at a time. It is not my place to tell you what to think and what to feel. That's not what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to get people to think. For too long we have been led down a path and followed the Pied Piper of what we thought were the people we trusted. Turns out we can't trust them. Most of them anyway. This is the Mrs. Wolfie from our Half Acre Homestead saying it's all about choices folks. Have a good weekend. <laughs>